Welcome everyone. This is Fit as a Fiddle Plus. My name is Kathy Benner and I'm here with Rita Brewer. And Fit as a Fiddle Plus is all about health and wellness. And so um, I just to give you a little bit I was looking to find our definition. Uh, fit is a fiddle definition is to be in fantastic health. Nowadays, fit means healthy. However, in the past, fit meant fitting, as in something that is well suited for a particular purpose. So we want you to be fit as a fiddle, plus in all four domains of health, in the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. So join us as we explore everything health and wellness. And uh, so anyway, I uh, am Kathy Binner. I have the Kathy Binner International Academy. And one of my uh, lanes, if you will, is this Fit as a Fiddle Plus. And we do a free meetup once a month, which is what you see us doing right now. And then um, there is a course that I'm getting ready to launch. And then we will have a mastermind that I'm going to launch um, for folks that want to get together a little more often. So that is a little bit about me. And, uh, and then I want to share uh, a little bit about Rita. So Rita, tell us about you and what you're doing currently. Hi, everyone. Rita Brewer, I've uh, been a physician assistant for over 32 years practicing uh, conventional medicine. And after many years of treating the worst of the worst complications of patients with uh, all the complications of diabetes, um, when I realized after I had a holistic approach to health and wellness that this is something that could be completely preventable and reversible, that's really fueled my passion to work with clients on an individual basis. So I have a one-on-one -on -one co health coaching program for uh, diabetes reversal for patients with type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes, struggling with obesity and, and overall metabolic health. So that's what I am currently doing and uh, supporting those clients and just getting the message out anywhere that I can with public speaking engagements, um, social media, free webinars, um, and just spreading the word. And I'm so excited to have one of my friends and colleagues here uh, with us tonight. So uh, Kathy, I'll leave it to you to share her bio and we'll get started. Well, very good. Rita, thank you so much for sharing that. And for the listeners, we do have a speaker's cabinet. And in our speaker's cabinet, you will find me, Kathy Benner, and you will find Rita. Uh, if you are looking for a speaker and Rita is, is looking for speaking engagements, uh, same as I am. And so you can go to kathybenner.com and scroll down to the speaker's cabinet and you'll find all of the information on how to connect with us directly if you need a speaker for an upcoming event. And uh, we travel so I can do live or uh, we can do virtual on Zoom. It's, it's whatever works for you and for us, for our schedules. Uh, but just connect if you're looking for a speaker. Um, tonight, we have Jessica Myers. I can't wait to talk to Jessica and find out a little bit more about Jessica. She began her career in healthcare over 14 years ago as an EMT in Los Angeles, California. She later became a phlebotomist working part-time and volunteering while earning her BS from Biola, is I say that right? Biola University. Jessica continued her education with a master's degree from the University of Southern California at Keck School of Medicine and graduating as a physician assistant. So welcome, Jessica. What is your backstory? This was like 14 years. What did you do before that? How did you decide 14 years ago to become an EMT? So I knew that I was heading in the direction of medicine. And, you know, while I was working in on my undergrad degree, it just felt like a good step in order to really familiarize myself with the medical model and see if it was something that I wanted to do. Um, also, I must admit, I'm a little bit of a adrenaline junkie. So working as an EMT in South Central Los Angeles seemed like a pretty exciting thing to do as, you know. I can't even imagine, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> so you name it, I've seen it. Um, you know, think of whatever crazy fire, first responder shows, um, and all those really underserved, um, high crime areas. I've seen it. I've done it. Um, and it's, you know, it's definitely molded my approach to medicine. Well, speaking of your approach, what brought you to a holistic lifestyle? Well, I have to say, as a kid, I was always playing in the canyons using whatever flowers I could find as medicine and makeup. 
um, as a PA student, you know, I still was a little bit different and really focused on gut health and the gut microbiota for my master's thesis. While that was always a passion of mine, I graduated and went right into a traditional practice environment and found that I wasn't able, I didn't feel like I could use all of my skills and talents to the highest potential while working in a system that you oftentimes have, you know, 15 minutes Mm -hmm. with a patient. And I knew that there was a lot of gray area of medicine where- You know, we hear this theme so many times every month when we're talking to, to folks on our podcast, don't we, Rita? We hear this Absolutely. theme over and over. Yes. It's like, it's it's just so mechanical, you know, the patient comes in and out and you don't have time to really, really look at that patient. Right. We hear that so often. Yeah, we see the gaps where we could do better. Exactly, mm-hmm. and those gaps, um, you know, where someone needs support in a particular area, but the risk of a medication may not necessarily be worth the benefit. So you're left with this problem of, I can do a medication, which might kind of be overkill on this person, or I can do nothing. And personally, that doing nothing, that's just not good enough for me. That's not what I would want for myself. That's not what I would want for my families. And so I kind of started on this journey of, what do you do for that gray in-between area? And that is what led me to herbal medicine which um, I, I started learning and just absorbing as much as I could and found this beautiful approach to taking care of people that excels in that gray area. Um, most problems are not problems that we need to treat with big medications. I am so thankful that medications are there for when we need them. Sometimes you need a medication to kind of halt a a disease process while you're working on the underlying factors that got the person to this point. Medications can be life-saving, but the majority of problems we see every day in medicine, they don't necessarily need that. They need a different kind of support. So, um, so I started learning herbal medicine with the amazing Dr. Low Dog, um, who, if you're not familiar with her, she has been counsel to the White House on natural substances, president of the USP that certifies supplements. Um, she has multiple books. She's just wonderful. She's also just a magical, captivating speaker. And I had the honor of learning and studying herbal medicine under her. Well, my question is, how did you make that segue to even finding her and knowing that you wanted to study under her? What was your aha moment? So, you know, I actually connected with a friend who had gone through the University of Arizona Integrative Medicine Fellowship, and she invited me to go to a conference with her with um one of the big integrative medicine groups. And it was at that conference that I feel like just a little part of me that was dying came back to life, Um, just interacting with everyone there and seeing all the speakers that are talking about just how they're making a integrative approach work in their practices. One of those speakers was Dr. Lodog And, um, you know, when she speaks, you could be in a room of thousands of people and you, every single person would feel like she is speaking directly to them. And she was speaking about what to do for so many patients in this, this gray area. And so I started applying that in practice and had these wildly successful outcomes that I never would have even imagined. Um, you know, I was making some recommendations that I knew it wouldn't hurt them and it could potentially help them, but I never, I never imagined the kind of results that I was seeing when they would come back. And so that really solidified that this was, you know, my calling. So I saw on your website 
um, that you have at the top of your website, it says unlock your healing potential. Mm -hmm. And that intrigued me. So um, obviously you made the segue from uh, traditional type medicine uh, mm -hmm. or, or else you're still doing that. I don't know, because I haven't chatted with you before. So um, are you totally now doing holistic with your own website and, and doing it on your own? Or are you still um, somewhat working, you know, in the traditional side as well? So I'm currently operating primarily in a clinical advisory capacity. Okay. Um, so I was doing lots of one-on-one -on -one work and this year I've really focused on how do I make what I do one-on-one? -on -one, um, how do I make that accessible for people on just a much larger scale? Um, one of one of the things that I think is really discouraging in the world of functional medicine, which um, my herbal medicine training, I'm an education junkie, um, that next step was functional medicine training and love functional medicine and the approach to getting to the root of disease. But something that's always been discouraging is that it comes at quite a price for many people, which makes it inaccessible for some of the people that need it the most. And I think that my time working as an EMT in South Central and doing volunteer work at free clinics in Watts, it really kind of helped to cultivate a heart for helping everybody. Um, I don't want the type of medicine that I practice to be inaccessible for the people that need it the most. And so, um, so really focusing on making that a possibility this year has been, um, has been really my focus. I love that. Yeah. Describe, yeah, go ahead, Rita. No, I was just going to say that's, it's really exciting. And, and because I, once you, like you said, when, once we learn about functional medicine and how impactful it is, we really do want to reach the masses and we're not there yet. I mean, it's grown a lot in the past 40 years. Um, but like she said, it's not accessible, you know, to people who can't afford it because it's a, it's all cash pay um, pricing um, because the insurance companies are not covering it yet. I don't know when that's going to happen, but as of right now, um, they're not. So um, talk about how you created this um, program that you, you're you sharing with uh, nationwide now, Jessica, it's really exciting. Yes, um, this is, I think, one of those like pinch me, it's so exciting sort of opportunities. And um, this year I have taken um, the bulk of what I would do one-on-one -on -one with clients and turned it into a program that is being implemented in a group of non-invasive, non-opioid pain management clinics. So, um, so they have funding in place for 750 locations nationwide. And something that just really makes me excited about this project is it's almost entirely insurance-based. And the bulk of the patient population are Medicare. And so everything that we're doing, we are, you know, kind of reverse engineering what we're doing to say, this is what we know we need to do to get these people well. Now, how can we get it covered by insurance so that we can do this well and the patients aren't left with a astronomical um, financial responsibility. So, um, so that's, that's what we've been doing. And, you know, it's amazing to know that, you know, say they are seeing 15 people a day on the low side in the clinic, you multiply that by 750 clinics nationwide. And in a single day, I have, impacted more people than I likely would be able to, you know, in years of working one-on-one. -on -one. I love that. I think that's so exciting, Jessica. And like you said, be able to reach those masses. And is it only out of um, pain management clinics or can it be in other clinics as well? 
So it's with a specific pain management group called Neurogenics, and they have really pioneered a new way to do pain management. Um, their focus as they're launching is in neuropathic pain, which Rita, as you know, primarily it comes from D- diabetes. diabetes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that is really exciting. That's something that Rita and I have really bonded over is, you know, just the new ways to treat and reverse metabolic dysfunction. And so it's really been a passion of mine and to see it come to life on such a huge scale is just amazing. I love that. It's, it's, it is really exciting. And, and as for people who don't know in our, our medical realm, you know, pain management patients, the only thing we really are offering them are procedures, maybe with needles in their spine um, or prescription strength pills. And you know what the opioid epidemic has been like, and, you know, all this chronic pain medications, and then the medications that cause more side effects, and we're not getting to the root cause of the problem when, like she said, diabetic patients are the main focus because they have the neuropathic pain, but diabetes can be reversed. You know, so why are we not working? Like she said, it's reverse engineering. It's like going backwards to like treating these root causes of what actually caused the neuropathy in the first place, instead of just saying, here you go, here's some more drugs, here's some more drugs. And and that's it. So I just think that's so awesome. I talked to so many friends, however, that, you know, they're going, you know, the traditional route, and they've talked to their doctor and the doctor says, uh, this is what we need to do. And you need to be on these pain meds and then you need to have surgeries or whatever. And, uh, and the patients are, they're not exploring any holistic type alternatives. They're just, they're just saying, well, my doctor said so. And, uh, and I've even tried opening up some conversations with some of these folks that there are some other options for them before they go that route and and they're not open to it at all they just don't know that's been my doctor for he was my my mom's doctor and now he's my doctor and he said this and so this is what I'm going to do and so how do you how do you get through to some of those folks that there are other options you know I feel like that is exactly the sort of doctor and practice that we would want to partner with I feel so strongly people get into the medical field because they want to help people and they want to do good. And the flip side of that is if there are options that they're not familiar with, or they don't quite understand, it seems scary. And if something seems scary and uncomfortable to them, they're not going to recommend it for their patients. And oftentimes, like was already said, the whatever is the alternative is, isn't covered by insurance. Yes. Yes. So they want to be, they want to be financially responsible in what they are asking their patients to do. They want to know that they're doing things that are um, considered, you know, appropriate in the, in the field, but they don't know what they don't know. And so, you know, if there's not a neurogenics center near your friends, you know, there probably will be within the next couple of years. And they are really pioneering the field of pain management because we are doing these programs in a way that can get reimbursed by insurance. Um, everything we're doing, there's tons of research to back it up. Um, the file of of research papers in support of our program. Um, If I had it all printed out, you know, it would be a couple feet high. Um, So, you know, I think showing them how what we're doing can alleviate their concerns of of the finances, of of the research-backed protocols, you know, I find that between that and hearing from patients that have gone through our programs, it would be impossible not to change their minds. Yeah. And the patients are going to be rewarded because they're going to feel better, but the clinicians are going to be rewarded as well. Because like you said, we want to help people and what we're doing is not really helping. It's just kind of pacifying and hoping to get them through. But anybody who in conventional medicine, who's ever worked in pain management, I mean, it's a very frustrating and draining 
area because people are chronically suffering. You're not really giving, getting them a lot of relief. Um, so it can, and there's such high burnout for practitioners now too, just for many reasons. But, you know, when people don't get well, yeah, you don't really feel good about what you're doing. So I think it's going to be great for the practitioners uh, to learn and to see this as well and just have a, a real snowball effect. So I just love it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, take us through without, without, you know, sharing, you know, under HIPAA and all of that, take us through what uh, might, might be a conversation that you might have with the patient and, and, and what might you do to help them? We're going to have some folks that listen to this later, um, that they don't have a medical background. They don't even have a holistic background, but they have some issues and they're like, how does this reflect on, on what I'm going through? How, how might this help me? So I guess the kind of prototypical patient that we might see has probably been dealing with type two diabetes for several years, probably a little bit overweight and starting to have mobility and um, other issues due to the progressing diabetes. Um, they're likely fed up with how limiting it is but not quite sure what to do. Now, do most of these patients already know that they have type two diabetes or do you have some that aren't even aware? You know what? Most of them are going to be, are, they're going to know. I okay. think the people that we catch that are unaware are the people that are in that pre-diabetic range. And this is a really frustrating area for me because oftentimes these people have been told for years and years and years that their blood sugar is normal. Mm -hmm. Their physicians are likely telling them that based on their numbers falling within the normal range. But if your normal range, you know, has a high end of 99 and you are at 95, 96, 97, 98, yes, technically you're in the normal range, but are you metabolically healthy? No. And then looking at years and years of results, oftentimes you can see that they were at a really healthy blood glucose level in the eighties, you know, five years ago, but then each year they're getting their labs done and it's a little bit higher and it's a little bit higher and it's a little bit higher. And so it's really learning to read between the lines and not just look at that normal as normal, mm -hmm. but to ask, why is this? going up, creeping up and up and up. And if we do nothing and we've seen it going up and up and up already, what can we expect to happen if we continue to do everything the same? It's going to keep going up and up and up. And it's not going to be long before it bumps up mm -hmm. into that 100 range for a fasting glucose, which is impaired fasting glucose. We want you well under a hundred. Um, and it just continues to bump on up. And then before you know it, you're type two diabetic. And it almost feels for many of them like it happened overnight. And there's a lot of questions mm -hmm. because, oh, I just had labs done a year ago or two years ago. And, and my doctor never said anything. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's really frustrating for me to see these people that come in and they are pre-diabetic or even, you know, newly diabetic and they never knew. But I also think that those numbers and that shock value is also a gift because you can absolutely reverse that damage. And they oftentimes, you know, when they have that shock, it comes with a little bit of uh, extra motivation to make some changes and they see, wow, you know, it's, it's time to make some changes. So then they're, they are completely ready. Can you give us a little like overview of like, what is their program consist of? How long consist of? How long does it last? Are you giving them meal plans or if workout routines? Like what, what does that include? So it's a 12 week program and it includes two electroanalgesia treatments each week. Um, so electroanalgesia is really cool because it's non-invasive and just using electrical impulses, they are able to both stimulate the nerves 
to regrow the nerves that were damaged from neuropathy from those high blood sugars they can be stimulated to be regrown as well as to block pain um, for a little bit of immediate relief so that is twice a week and um, they're getting iv treatments and then they're getting a very high level diet and lifestyle counseling and um it's really amazing when you combine those three aspects and really have that functional medicine counseling and the time for our clinicians to talk about these things with the patients. And you can really see, you know, the dramatic benefits. And, you know, patients are saying after their first couple mm -hmm. treatments, what a huge difference it's making. And that's, what really makes it worth it at the end of the day. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love it because again, I'm, 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 I'm like the poster child, you know, the doctor kept saying, you're normal, you're normal, everything's fine. But I could see that my numbers were creeping up there and, but he kept saying, you're fine. You're fine. You're, you're in the normal range. Um, and it still bothered me. So um, finally, I, you know, decided I needed to do something about it. So I actually started, uh, you know, even though he's like, you're not diabetic, you don't need to do anything about that. I started paying attention to my own numbers in between doctor visits. And, and, uh, and, and I realized that I was, I was higher than I should have been more often than not. And, uh, and that really bothered me that the doctor didn't seem concerned about it at all. And again, like you said, in the traditional realm, you know, he, 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 he comes in, he, you know, goes through the chart, says, you're fine, see you in six months and out the door he goes. And, uh, and so I just wasn't satisfied with that. So this is such an important message. Um, so Jessica, what makes you mad about just the, the medical industry at large? What, what is the one thing that, that really kind of makes you mad? Mm, you know, I think just not having the time to listen to patients. I think the medical, the Western medical industry, it needs to do a lot more listening. And, um, you know, Kathy, you are an expert in your body. You are in it every day and you were doing the work to see how those blood sugars were going. Mm -hmm. You take that to your physician, you say, if I'm fine, why are these numbers high so often? We need, we need doctors to listen and I think they want to, but the time is one of those rate limiting factors that's preventing them to provide the kind of care that they want for everyone. And so finding ways to streamline things so that they have more time to listen and they have more time to educate on these foundational pieces. There is so much information out there these days. We all can find the information, but oftentimes we don't know even what to search for. And then you have that certain uh, community of folks that, um, you know, they, they don't know their way around to even ask the right questions. They don't know what they don't know, and they, they don't know how to get the information. And, uh, and so what is it that, breaks your heart about the industry, makes you mad that the doctors need to have more time to listen and to listen more. And what breaks your heart? You know, it's all those patients that fall through the crack for years and years and years. And, you know, there's been so many opportunities on so many different occasions to have a real conversation about what is really going on and give the patient a chance to make the changes needed to reverse it. Um, you know, with metabolic disease in particular, there are so many things outside of medicine, simple things, you know, as simple as the order in which you eat the food on your plate. That can make huge differences in how your blood sugar responds. You know, what if we taught everyone what order to eat their food in? You know, what if we got all of our patients walking even for as little as five minutes mm -hmm. after. Um, you know, it's free. Both of those things are completely free. And we have data showing they're as effective as medication. So why are people so 
surprised when I talked to them about this, you know, there was right. so much opportunity that was missed. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're not trained with any of that in our conventional uh, teaching as well. We're not trained about what is the, uh, well, yes, this is the normal range, but what is the optimal range? We don't talk about that. And, you know, the stats are, are just astronomical. And that's why I, I love being in this, this field of, of teaching people about metabolic health, because one in every 10 people, and that's just in America is, di is type two diabetic. And like one out of every four don't even know that they are. And and then the pre-diabetic patients, one of, out of every three Americans is pre-diabetic. And most of them, 90% of them don't even know that they are. I mean, and I've seen patients over and over again who have come to me maybe just for weight loss. And then, you know, I say, well, let me see your, you know, recent labs from your doctor. And it's like, oh, your A1C is 5.9. You didn't mention that you were pre-diabetic. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that I was. And I look and it's like three years in a row, he's been mm -hmm. pre-diabetic and he, his doctor never even mentioned it. And like you said, I mean, we could have been preventing and yeah. reversing yeah. issues. And then all of the snowball things that happened from that, from that blood sugar dysregulation. And now he's hypertensive and now his high, his cholesterol is abnormal and he's all had more risk. Could have been yeah. Prevented a long right. time. Exactly. Yeah. And then of course it's all connected. So then, you know, then it's impossible, especially for a lot of gals to even lose weight when, when they're insulin resistive. So now all of a sudden, yeah. you know, the weight keeps going up and it just makes all of their numbers even worse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what do you do? You know, it's, you know, metabolic disease, it's that blood sugar dysfunction. And we see it come hand in hand with, um, lipid problems. So collect cholesterol problems and blood pressure problems. And, you know, do you take a pill for every single thing? You know, what about when you're just like on that, you know, like you're not quite outside the range, but um, what do you do in that place? You know, traditional medicine says you don't do anything. Doctor says, oh, you should probably exercise more and eat better. What does that even mean? Mm -hmm. You know, most doctors don't have a really good way of explaining that or the time to explain what they mean by that. Um, but it's really a great place where I think that herbal medicine also really shines because, you know, we do have some really great um, herbal tools mm -hmm. that help to combat metabolic disease and, you know, helping with that blood pressure at the same time as helping restoring your insulin sensitivity. Um, I would love to for you to share a little bit about that a little more, Jessica. I know we can't talk about like specific patient treatment and dosages and things yeah. like that, but just in general, some of the herbs that you like to use for your metabolic patients. How about like my three favorite herbs? Go for, for it. Great. Okay. <laughs> um, so olive leaf, which it's exactly what it sounds like when there's an olive tree and they harvest the olives and then at the end of the season, they prune the trees and what they take from pruning, they take those leaves and turn it into capsules of olive leaf. And we have seen just taking those olive leaf capsules, clinically significant improvements in blood pressure. And it's also helping to restore insulin sensitivity at the same time. So that's like a, a big double whammy in metabolic disease and think about where it's coming from. It's the trimmings from the olive trees. So what does that say about cost? It's not going to be one of those fancy expensive supplements. This is something that most people would easily be able to afford. Um, right. And that's where the Mediterranean diet, right? So good mm -hmm. for yeah. heart health. Are you getting that olive from like olive oil? Are you getting it from the olive leaf? That's awesome. Yes. Um, another one that I love is artichoke leaf, which, um, do you guys like artichokes? You ever mm -hmm. eat them? I do. Mm -hmm. What you're eating, that part of the artichoke, a lot of people, when you say artichoke leaf, they think it's the little um, pieces that you peel off and that you're eating when you um, order, you know, a artichoke mm -hmm. and butter and all sorts of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That's actually the flour that you're eating. Um, the plant gets huge um, and it has these big leaves and then a big stalk shoots up in the center with the flour. And that's the part that you eat. What we use in herbal medicine is those big leaves down at the bottom. So again, it's kind of like the junk part of 
the plant that farmers aren't selling, again, making it a very financially responsible supplement to recommend. Um, but the artichoke leaf, it really has powerful effects on cholesterol. It also helps to improve digestion and help that gallbladder to contract well um, and fully with meals. And um, so, you know, really the two of those can really find some dramatic effects. Now, does it come in a capsule as well? You can get it in a capsule as well. Um, so with herbal medicine, capsules are probably the easiest thing to do. There's also liquid preparations for everything called a tincture, and it's typically a alcohol-based extract. Um, and those are also wonderful and especially great for people that may not be able to swallow capsules. Mm -hmm. I'm also really careful in my practice not to give someone too many capsules because just the act of taking a bunch of capsules every day uh -huh. makes someone feel like they have a lot of problems. So um, finding different creative ways to get some of these things in can really help just with um, how they personally feel about their health. So, um, you know, getting- So what's your, what's your third one, Jessica? Okay, so number three, um, I guess it's not a plant, but a compound found in several plants. And that would be berberine, which comes from plants like organ grape, or golden seal. And if you've ever seen these plants and looked at their roots, they're just a really bright, um, like orangey yellow. And what gives it that color is the berberine. And berberine is really amazing because, you know, there's data showing that you're taking it three times a day for three months and it can restore your insulin sensitivity. It will decrease waist circumference, which we measure that because it's a really important measure of metabolic health. Um, you want the waist circumference to be less than half of the person's height. Um, you can also do waist circumference to hip ratios as well. That's another uh, way of looking at um, the body composition and seeing, you know, is this metabolically healthy or not so much? Um, so berberine, it's improving insulin sensitivity, it's helping with waist circumference, and then it's also helping with blood pressure as well. And, you know, it's, it's really amazing when you have one plant that do so many does so many different mm -hmm. things. It's also helping with the gut microbiota, all of the different um, organisms living in your gut. Um, berberine is a antimicrobial as well. So and many of these patients, there is some sort of dysfunction in the gut and the berberine can also help to um, balance that out as well. So three really powerful herbs. Now, and some of, some of the, the success that you have with these herbs overlap each other a bit. So what happens if someone just goes out and does all three? Is there a way to test and measure to make sure you're not getting too much of something? You know, generally with supplements, especially ones with overlapping mechanisms of action, it's always best to start one at a time, seeing how you respond to it. Um, more isn't necessarily better. You know, I don't want people going out and spending a ton of money on supplements when one might have been just as appropriate. Um, while these three in particular do have a lot of overlap, you know, it's oftentimes matching the herb to what the patient is experiencing and trying to find what's going to cover the most needs that that person has. And, you know, of course, combining, you know, different herbs with nutrient supplementation, because, you know, these people, they they always have some degree of nutrient depletion, which again, they have no idea about it. And, you know, data comes out showing that just different minerals can help improve your mm -hmm. insulin sensitivity as well, or improve the blood sugar and help to restore your gut health. So, um, 
it's really amazing just being able to use these and match it to the patient. I don't feel like they're one size fits all. I think herbal medicine does a so much better job of matching the treatment to the patient than Western medicine. Western medicine, it's all standard of care. This is your symptom. This is what you get. It's all the same out the door. Whereas I think in herbal medicine, we, um, I don't know, there's just a little bit more um, feeling in it, which I know that's like starting to get a little bit woo woo there, but, um, but getting to know a patient and getting to know them beyond just their lab numbers and symptoms, you're gonna, you're, you're really going to find so many different things that are going to point you to why this person needs olive leaf more than artichoke leaf. Um, you know, artichoke leaf in particular, is the patient always going to tell you about their digestion and how they get a little bit um, bloaty and feel like their food just sits there? Um, your labs aren't going to show that, but talking to them, getting to know them, and just hearing how they they talk about their problems, I think gives us an opportunity to do better. Absolutely. So good. This is Yes, this is amazing information. I, I, I just love chatting with you. Um, if you could sum up why your message is so important, um, what, what would be your overarching problem that you want to solve? Well, just as Rita was saying in the statistics regarding people with type 2 diabetes, the people that are pre-diabetic that don't even know it, um, one in three. Think about the people who are approaching that point. And then we're talking about a huge majority of the entire population with some sort of blood sugar problem. It doesn't happen overnight and there are ways to reverse it. Um, I think, you know, it's important because it affects everyone. Mm -hmm. It affects everyone. And it's, it's now a minority to be metabolically healthy. And so if people have the tools and the knowledge to make the changes early and to identify problems early, you know, their trajectory in life is going to be completely different. They can avoid so many different problems. And we now know that uh, blood glucose spikes, they are a major driver of inflammation. And inflammation is implicated in basically every single modern illness. And even depression there's new information coming out that depression is more of an inflammatory disorder than having anything to do with the neurotransmitters. So it's just really amazing seeing medicine evolve, but we, we got to give, we got to give people the tools to, to do better. So describe your 12 week program. What, how, what, what do they, do your patients actually go through in the 12 weeks? Just over in general. Well, they'll be learning about nutrition recommendations, different little blood sugar hacks, um, which are basically the very simple things that you can do that cost nothing that you can incorporate into your everyday routine to make sure that blood sugar is stable. We talk about movement and um, we talk about like the mental aspect and stress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how your environment plays a role, even down to, you know, products that you use in your home. Mm -hmm. And we really work to show people how all these different things can be affecting their health. But to teach them in a kind of one step at a time format so that it's not overwhelming. And we roll out the information in a way that we've seen really sets them up for success. Um, you know, we don't want to give someone a, um, you know, a huge giant um, beast of a change to make and leave them feeling like they can't do it. But if we just give them a little piece, uh -huh. 
and show them how to do it, show them what it would look like in their life to make these changes, um, we can get them to the finish line and see a huge amount of success. So how can uh, people become a patient at one of your clinics, uh, Jessica? Do they just look up neurogenics.com uh, or how, how do they uh, get involved? So um, going to the Neurogenics website is the best way to get access to this program that we've been talking about. And it's Neurogenics, N-E-U-R-A-G-E-N-E-X dot com and if there's not a location near you that's open right now there will be soon um there are big plans this is going all the way and there's you know the funding in place to make it happen there are so many people that believe in this so it there will be a location near you um and as far as you know working with me one-on-one -on -one, um, I'm not accept, accepting new clients at this moment, but in the next year, we'll be rolling out so many more opportunities to work together. So the best way to kind of really stay up to date on what I'm doing and how my offerings are kind of evolving would probably be Instagram, um, where I share kind of the most up-to-date, fresh information, which is just my name, Jessica C. Myers, and on my website at jessicamyers.com. I love that. How has your faith helped in your journey, Jessica? Oh, I think it's given me the stamina to get through hard things. And um, it's really interesting. I've been, I guess, in a very reflective sort of mood for much of this year. And I'm able to look back, you know, for the first time in many situations, at some of the hardest, most difficult, heartbreaking times of my life. And I'm able to look back at those times and see how necessary they were and how, you know, the heartache of whatever situation was really God's hand steering me in this direction, putting the people in my life that I needed in order to be doing what I'm doing right now, um, professionally, as well as, you know, just having the, the balance that I've always wanted in terms of having a career and being the kind of mother and wife that I want to be as well. So, um, I just have to say, if you're going through something difficult, just keep going. Um, you may not see God's hand right now you may not see it next week or even next year but um you know someday you're gonna look back and you're gonna be like wow you know mm -hmm. like just keep walking by faith not by sight so blessed mm -hmm. i love that jessica thank you so much for that are you working on anything currently new or just doing what it is that you're doing anything new coming around the corner so yes, there are some really exciting new things coming, probably launching, I'm guessing mid year next year. Okay. So I can't share everything about it with you, but yes, this is going to be a way to work with me one-on-one -on -one again. And just saying, if you, if you love a first responder, if you are a first responder, you're definitely going to want to be um, keeping an eye out for when that launches um, because I am married to a firefighter and there's a lot of unique health concerns that come with doing that kind of work. Mm -hmm. A lot of unique health concerns with being the spouse of a firefighter as well. And so I, I really have a heart for supporting those people and am, you know, really boiling down all of my education and experience into a way that can specifically support the gaps in care and support for the fire community. I'm excited. I'm going to keep my eye open and see what's happening with you. This has been a great conversation. Rita, any final comments for Jessica? 
Uh, no, I just, I'm excited to see how God is moving. And, you know, we, we met each other just a couple of years ago. We we're both just starting fresh with our private coaching and just to see all the amazing things that she's accomplished and God is doing in her life these past year, um, major life transitions, relocating and starting this amazing company program, divine designing this program. I think it's just so awesome. I'm excited for her. I'm excited for all the patients and practitioners that her program is going to be able to help. And I look forward to just uh, following along for the ride and see how it's all going. So I love it. I love congratulations. it. Congratulations. Uh, yes. We have Marcy in the audience. Marcy, if you have any questions, just uh, drop it in the chat and we'll uh, get Jessica to answer. And while uh, we're waiting a little bit to see if Marcy has a question, I just want to say again that I am Kathy Binner. And you can find all of my information at kathybinner.com. If you want a replay of this actual uh, podcast, you can go to kathybinner.com and just scroll down to Fit as a Fiddle Plus, uh, the free meetup. And that's where you'll find all of the replays of all of our podcasts. You can just click through. Um, give me a little bit after this one before I get this one uploaded. It might be later this evening, but you'll find the replay of this one as well. And uh, I'm going to send all of the links over to Jessica so that she can use the podcast however she uh, wishes uh, for promotion for what she's doing. And I always send a copy to Rita so she can upload it into her podcast. And then Rita, share folks how uh, folks can get in touch with you, Rita, and then we'll let Jessica share one more time on how folks can get in touch with her. Sure. Yeah. You can find me. Everything that I do is on my website, ritabrewer.com. Um, I have a free download there. I would love to you guys to have. It's called my three quick wins to improve your diabetes today. You can book a free call with me. Um, if you, again, speaking engagements, webinars, um, if you need somebody who loves to talk about type two diabetes reversal, that's my jam. So uh, come on and find me over there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rita. And one more time, Jessica, how can folks get in touch with you? Well, it was really just a pleasure talking to both of you um, and getting to share all this information for more about, you know, everything that I'm doing and, you know, herbal approaches to medicine. Um, I talk about all that stuff over on my Instagram, and that is at Jessica C. Myers, um, Myers with a M-E-Y-E-R-S. And then you can always keep up to date with um, what I'm up to at jessicamyers.com. That's where you'll keep an eye out for when I'm accepting applications to work with me one-on-one -on -one again um, and all the great things that are going on. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Marcy, thank you for listening in. Um, again, this is Fit as a Fiddle Plus. We come to you every fourth Monday of the month, and we have a different person that we interview on our podcast. So save the date on your calendar and tune in every month to hear what we have going on. So with that, we're going to say goodbye. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Kathy and Rita. It was great to meet you both. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.